Hey guys, it's Micah and today I'll be telling you about the phaser audio effect in Ableton Live. Now a phaser uses a series of all pass filters to create a phase shift in the frequency spectrum of a sound. Now in case you haven't heard of an all pass filter before, an all pass filter is a signal processing filter that passes all frequencies equally in gain but it changes the phase relationship among various frequencies. And it does this by varying its phase shift as a function of frequency. Now the phase is just the specific points in the waveform that you find yourself in. So if you're shifting the phase, you're shifting how far along the waveform you are. People often get phases and flanges confused. So at the end of the video, I'll also put an eye card up so that you can check out my flanger video if you're interested in that. In that. Now I've got a sample. This is what it sounds like without the phaser. And I added the phaser on, and this is what it sounds like. And if I export this and drag it into my sonic visualizer, you can see the spectrogram here. Now this phaser does have an LFO, which changes how far along these little notches in the frequency are. And these little notches in the frequency are very characteristic of phasers. Now let's jump right into the controls. The pulse control over here creates notches in the frequency spectrum. The pulse control can work with the feedback control at the bottom here under your graphic display to invert the waveform and convert these notches into peaks or poles if you'd rather call it that. So the more poles, the more notches. And with feedback. On the left under this XY controller you've got your filter cut of frequency and this is changed with this frequency control which can be adjusted in tandem with the feedback by using this XY controller, this little yellow circle. Moving into the left or right or rather along the X axis changes the frequency and moving it up and down along the Y axis changes the feedback. Then this phaser has two modes, space and earth. You can toggle between them by clicking on this rectangle. These modes change the spacing of the notches along the spectrum and hence also the color of the sound. This effect can be further adjusted with the color control underneath. This is earth, this is space. And space characteristically also sounds a little bit more sci-fi-y. You can continue to change the sound with this color control. Your dry weight knob just adjusts the ratio between your dry unaffected signal and your wet lol and your wet phased signal. Then we've dealt with this XY controller, your frequency and your feedback, and now we get to our envelope. Now this envelope section makes periodic control of this filter frequency possible. You can increase or decrease the envelope amount, or you can invert the shape if you go into negative values. So in the middle you've got zero. To the left is negative and to the right is positive. Together with this envelope, you can adjust your attack and release controls to define the envelope shape. So let's give a gradual envelope with a quick release. Without the envelope. And just to rehash, this envelope is a function of this filter frequency down here. Now your phaser contains two LFOs to modulate the filter frequency for the left and the right stereo channels. The LFOs have six possible waveform shapes, which you access with this little drop-down menu over here. This down here is your sample and hold, which is the S and H in your title. And you can determine the amount of LFO you want with this knob. At 0%, you don't have any LFO. Then you've got your rate control. You can either sync up the rates of this LFO with your song tempo. To do that, you need to click on this little semi-quaver icon. Now the rate will be in terms of beats, so 16th notes, half notes, and so forth. And in sync mode, you can change the phase as well as the offset. Like I said earlier, the phase is just where in the waveform you are, and the offset is either shifting the wave forward or backwards a bit. But not just the location where you're at, but the whole wave. And then if you don't want it synced to your song tempo, you can change it to hertz, in which case your rate will be in hertz, and you've got phase or spin, depending on which of these two icons you've pushed. This phase over here refers to your phase in your left and your right channel. So if you want them to be in sync, you're going to have to put it on 0 or 360, which is essentially 0. And if you want the phase of your left and your right channels to literally be opposite one another, then you need to change it to 180. Compare that to no phase.
And then you'll spin, instead of changing the phase from the one channel to the other, it'll detune one waveform from the other, which means the one will actually just be a little bit quicker and it'll sound a little bit more wonky. You can use the phaser to increase the stereo movement in any of your track and add a little bit of depth to it. You can add a phaser onto things like guitars to actually shift them to the sides to make, say, room for your vocals, if that's the kind of music you're making. You can use a phaser to thicken up a lead guitar's signal, or you can use it in sound design if you want to create some really weird, interesting sounds. If you're into that sort of thing, I also suggest you check out the Grain Delay video, which has some really great applications in sound design. I'll link that in the iCard, as well as the Flanger video that I mentioned earlier. So thanks for watching and I will see you soon in the next one.